Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video. Today I'm going to be giving my thoughts on what new mounts could be brought into the game. The six mounts we have in the game already provide very good coverage for most if not all terrain currently in the game. But what happens when Guild Wars 2 moves on to the next Living World season or the next expansion and we see more variety in the landscapes? Will we get new mounts like how the Roller Beetle was introduced with Long Live the Lich? Also, make sure to vote on your favourite mount idea at the end of the video using the poll in the cards in the top right. Now, while we might not get any more during the current roster that we have, we may see more mounts in the open world similar to how mounts can be used at their respective hearts or how free to play accounts can rent the roller beetle at the races. So here are my theories on the sort of mounts we may see in the future. So the first thing I did was I looked at the function or the purpose of mounts by looking at the original five and seeing how they worked. And I narrowed it down to four requirements that all of the original mounts complete. One, enhances pre-existing movement. Two, adds new movement. Three, enhances new movement. And four, engages enemies. All of the original five smoothly fit into this, such as the Raptor. It enhances land speed adds the gap jump, enhances it to canyon jump, and gathers enemies when engaging. Now the roller beetle, which was added after Path of Fire, doesn't fit perfectly, but covers three well. It enhances land speed, adds barrier smash, and charges through enemies to engage them. So when coming up with the new mount ideas, I tried to keep them in line with these requirements. So let's get the easy one out of the way. Orene or a dragon mount. Now I think that this mount should be restricted to story instances as it should feel completely overpowered. I think this mount would be unlocked at the end of the Crystal Champion Mastery line, giving it the Bond of Life and Bond of Vigor permanently. So the pre-existing movement that the mount would focus on would be the flight that we see in the Griffin mount. However, due to having the Bond of Vigor permanently, the mount would have almost unlimited flight. This could be enhanced by Burst of Speed giving more horizontal speed and the mount could engage foes with a breath of fire with a range of maybe 1200, kind of like a staff range. Like I said, I am imagining this mount as completely overpowered and it would probably only feature maybe once or twice towards the climax of Living World Season 4, probably as Aureen in some sort of chase scene, maybe chasing after Krokotark. So with that out of the way, let's move on to the next one. But one of the places that I really want to explore in the world of Guild Wars is a fully underground region with many layers, tight caves, large caverns, rivers of lava and loads of hidden secrets. However at the moment there is no way of traversing lava and with that we move on to the next idea, the lava elemental. Now this mount can't really enhance pre-existing movement as there is no safe way of traversing lava. So the new movement it would unlock for players would be to travel on the surface of lava, protecting the player from the lava below. Meaning that if there were, say, lava falls, the player could not ascend them, but the player could descend them. This new movement could be enhanced potentially by the elemental forming into a shield around the player, allowing them to dive under the lava's surface for a short time. This time could be regulated by heat. If we stay under the surface for too long, you'd start to take burning damage, as the air trapped by the elemental starts to heat up. Similar to the skimmer, the elemental would be a lot faster on lava than on land. However, if you use it to engage on land, it could explode into small pools of lava dotted around the immediate vicinity, causing severe burning to your foes, but keeping you protected from burning on said lava. While the lava elemental covers the hot and bright lava rivers that could be found in underground zones, there is the question of the dark, twisting caverns, for which I present the Glowworm, a blind, glow-in-the-dark worm that refrains from bright spaces and enjoys burrowing in the ground. The worm would enhance player movement in caves, basically ground speed, but taking into account the uneven terrain that will be found in caves by allowing the players on the worm's back as it travels throughout the cave floor. The worm could also travel faster under the surface, and by bringing the player under the surface too, could improve player speed when travelling underground. This new movement could be enhanced with the ability to burrow through walls or floors. This means that players could skip from one cave to another and figure out shortcuts through the cave systems. As I said, the worm I had imagined was a blind glow worm that refrained from bright areas such as towns, 
meaning the mount could not be used in lit areas. To counter this, the mount will provide a passive light, helping players to navigate dark caverns. To engage enemies, the worm could create a burst of light, blinding all enemies nearby and providing a passive light for a few short moments after you engage. Another possible location would be further north to the far Shiver Peaks. This mountainous landscape would be cold, meaning a mount immune to the bitter cold, first seen in the bitter frost frontier, would be needed. The idea for this mount is an ice brood minion who has been freed from Jormag's influence. The mount would have to be from the region and one that could survive in the harsh conditions. For this reason, I think an ice brood wolf would be perfect. The wolf would excel at travelling across tundra and in the bitter cold, keeping the players warm in freezing temperatures without the need to craft the thaw elixir to survive the bitter cold. To engage enemies, the mount could explode with a burst of cold, freezing all nearby foes while providing the player with immunity from the bitter cold for a short time, maybe a minute or two, long enough to survive an encounter, loot your enemies and then get back on your mount. Since ArenaNet balanced the underwater combat a few months ago, there's been a nagging suspicion that at some stage we will see a fully underwater map, be it as a single living world episode or as part of an expansion. So the next mount is going to be purely for underwater areas and won't be able to survive above the surface. So the idea for this is a hippocampus, basically the top half of a horse with the bottom half of a fish and it will provide players with the ability to swim through the ocean at incredible speeds. However, it will not be able to survive on the surface. The hippocampus could use its lower body to propel through the water with incredible speed, and when engaging foes, it could create a whirlwind, dragging all the nearby enemies together and damaging them. Basically, it's the equivalent of the raptor, but for the sea. Well, that is it for today's video, guys. I do hope you enjoyed. Make sure to vote on which mount idea is your favourite in the cards in the top right, be it the Dragon Mount, Lava Elemental, Glowworm, Ice Brood Wolf or Hippocampus. Also be sure to leave your mount ideas in the comment section down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more Guild Wars 2 content in the future. Until next time, take care guys.